All right, you guys, thanks for joining us. It is October 27th, and we have a lot of stuff to cover tonight. At least I feel like we have a lot of stuff coming up with November, and you know, we've got Court of Force launch, we've got Team Spirit. We had a really fun little announcement for those of you who are pushing towards Success Club. We've got a winter retreat plan. So I'm going to go right into um, share screen and I've got some slides just to kind of like prompt myself so I don't forget to mention anything here. Okay, so let me just make sure I can get this centered. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Okay. Okay, yeah, I had to have that picture of Joel there because he is just gorgeous, you guys. He is, whew, I got to see him like without a shirt by the pool near the beach last weekend. It was awesome. And I'm sorry, Tony Horton, you're not my favorite anymore. Totally Joel all the way. And he's such a nice guy. Like he, he just seems like such a normal guy. And Jericho too, like she is so sweet that just their personalities alone make me want to do this program. Like I have no experience with MMA workouts, nothing like that. Like I feel stupid trying to do like jabs and hooks and whatever. I don't even know what they're called yet, but I'm excited about this. So you guys need to be pumped up too. And I just, you know, I've, I've heard from some of you guys that maybe you're not super excited about it. Maybe you're not going to do it. And I just feel like you're missing out. And of course this is up to you. What you do is your business. But I'm just going to tell you what I've learned over the course of two years because there have been product launches I have not been excited about. And in the beginning, I did not promote them either. What a big mistake that was. And I will tell you why. All eyes are on you guys as coaches. People that are Beachbody customers might be interested in this program and they might not know you're a coach. They might not know you offer it they might go to someone else to get this program because they're interested in it. And if you don't show that you are, they aren't gonna come to you. So all eyes are on you. You have to make sure that you are the storefront, you're the presence of your business, and make it known that you're gonna be doing this program. So this is a gift that Beachbody gives us. It is a slow time, you guys. We've got Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. People are thinking about eating, they're thinking about candy, dinners, big meals, saving money for holidays. Beachbody is giving us this product launch as a gift, I feel, because this is such a traditionally slow time of the year. The only way we're going to be able to sell stuff is by having a new product. So all the people that are just like Beachbody fanatics, which I am, I've come to be one, I didn't really understand that there were people out there that would buy every single workout that comes out until I got to be one of those people. So if you're a new coach and you're not reaching out to people that um, are just making it known that this is coming out, they're gonna go get it from someone else. So just, just keep that in mind right now. There are so many um, people that they're just gonna do it and they, if, if you don't show them that you're gonna do it too, like I said, they're just gonna go to someone else. And this isn't just like, loyal Beachbody customers. This could be your friends or your family, someone who's just looking for a workout program. You have to show them that you're interested in it and you're excited about this format. Even if you have to like pick little things that you're excited about, like for country heat, I will admit I was not super excited about country music, but I could honestly say with integrity that I was excited to do another autumn workout. So be, you know, whatever you say, make sure that you speak with integrity, but find something about this thing that you're excited about. Like I said, if you don't share it, another coach will. This is also an important opportunity for you guys to have another transformation story, whether it's your own personal transformation or you help a challenger with their transformation story. Because I'll get more into that later and you know, I want to talk about like staying in your hot zone and staying in like phase one of your business, but really that it's all about the transformation. So I don't know if you guys have been sharing like some of the great before and after pictures that the coach test group has been sharing. I've got a bunch on my blog. If you want to pull some, I think I have some in our team group page too, but you know, that's, this is your opportunity to have an awesome transformation story between now and Christmas. When, think about it, like if people see that you have a before and after between now and Christmas, 
who do you think they're going to call when the January resolutions hit? I mean, it's really a no-brainer, you guys. Court of Force, you have to be promoting it. Like Leah said, if she has an event page, I have an event page set up. I've got like a little mini challenge group. I'm messaging as many customers as I can right now personally about this. I mean, I, I'm going to do some blanket emails too that just go out to everybody, you know, like cut and copy and paste. But I'm going to be spending all my time private messaging past challengers. So that's about core to force. Um, I also wanted to mention too about our team spirit challenge and hopefully you guys have all signed up. You have until the end of the month to sign up for this. It's another success club opportunity. So if you hit success club five, you'll get a core to force tank top or t-shirt, which is really cool. Um, but I think our team has a really fun opportunity to go for like the most spirited team because, you know, we're not going to be the biggest. We're, you know, we're no, I'm not Amy Silverman. Lee is not Melanie Mitro and that's okay, but we can be team crazy train and show people how fun it is to be us. So I would like to see us get really creative and use that hashtag team beach body. What is it? That's a mouthful team beach body team spirit. So when we're doing like our accountability posts and things like that, we're going to do, you know, team crazy train. And then that long ass word I just said with the hashtag. So I think that'll be fun. And at the very least, if you hit success club five, you'll get a tank top or a t-shirt. So I want to talk about the winter retreat too. And most of us are in the Midwest and it's going to be cold and I don't know if you're like me, but it's always awesome to have something to look forward to. And I've always wanted to do something fun at the Mall of America. And I've got some crazy ideas brewing a little bit. They may or may not involve a scavenger hunt. Um, this, just because it's at Mall of America, you guys, doesn't mean we're going to go shopping. It's not about that. It's all about team building, just having fun and socializing. Probably do a night out in Minneapolis, take the light rail down there. Um, it's gonna be super fun. And we do have a little gift for all of you who hit Success Club um, in October, November, and December and rank Emerald or above. So that'll be something that will help you offset your costs. I think most of us are gonna stay at the Radisson Blue. I've looked at rates, they're really not that bad. I think they're around 150 right now. So you know, if you get like a few people to stay with you, your rate really isn't gonna be that, that high. So that is about that. Okay, but that pretty much covers announcements. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about goal setting because I really think that we need to do more of that. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. So I don't know if you guys are reading the 12 week year and if you haven't, you're looking for a PD book that really helps you build your business, I highly recommend this one. This has gotta be the best book I've read probably in two years, I think. It's, it's, my defi it's definitely my favorite as far as time management goes, prioritizing and really breaking down what you want to accomplish into small manageable pieces. So what I want you guys to do, if you're in Team Crazy Train, even if you're not, I want to think you to think about where you're going to be ending up at the end of this year with your coaching business. What rank do you want? What does your income, what do you want that to look like? And also, what are your fitness goals? Because this is a fitness job, you guys. If you don't have fitness goals, all this other stuff doesn't really fall into place. So you need to always, always be staying on track with your fitness. So I want you to write that down. At the end of the year, how are you going to end the year? And these goals should be, they should stretch you. They should not be easy, but they should be realistic too. I mean, it would be nice for me to say I'd like to be a 15 star by the end of the year, but I know that that's not going to happen unless I work, even if I work 24 seven, I don't know if that would happen. So that doesn't fit in with my other goals of like still being a wife and mom. So think about that. And then from there, you really need to think about your roadmap to get there because it's great that you set this great destination, but if you don't figure out where to go along the way. It's like driving across the country without a map, right? So you need your little map on how to get there. And that's what reverse engineering is like. So now you need to reverse engineer your goals. So you've got a goal that, okay, October's pretty much done. So we've got two months left to get it done. What are you gonna do 
in the eight weeks left or the nine weeks left that we have to get there. So what you need to do is break those goals down into smaller segments, monthly, weekly, and then daily. So let's say you wanna be a diamond coach and say you're emerald right now. Maybe you've got another one here or there. So you need to know the exact number of coaches you need to get to diamond. You can't just say, oh, I'd like to be a diamond. Well, what does that mean? It means, it, you know, let's say you need six new coaches. Let's also assume that maybe one will drop. So maybe you should say, I need seven new coaches. That means if there are eight weeks left in the year, you're going to have to average about one new coach a week. So how are you going to get that done? That's where you really need to think about intentionally marketing or your intentional market. <laughs> I can't say this. Create an intentional marketing calendar based on your goals. So I took a little picture of like my goals. My goals are to be an elite coach, which is a stretch at this point. I still need 55 elite points left to get that. Um, I wanna be a seven star diamond. I'm five star right now. So that's a stretch for me too. But um, I've got my how kind of broken down. I need two additional coaches. I need to do mentorship calls. I know exactly how many elite points I need to get. I, knew, I need to know how many I need to average per month to get there. So I have reverse engineered my goals and I want you guys to do the same thing. So when I create my marketing calendar, I have those goals in mind. I know I need to be recruiting. I, knew, I know I need to get new coaches and I know how many I need to get to get there. I know exactly how many coaches I need to get to Success Club every month. So I'm gonna be doing mentorship calls to help them get there. But the last point that I really wanna to make to you guys is make sure that your activity matches your goals. Because I often see coaches that set these lofty goals and they might even know how to get there, but their activity doesn't match that. So, Let's take the three to five conversations that we, sh we say you should be having every day. That's to get to Success Club five or ten, you guys. I kind of think that for me, I need to have ten conversations for every challenge pack that I sell. So if I want to sell three challenge packs, I need to have 30 conversations. That's a lot of conversations, you guys. So if you're not really like reverse engineering your goals and then not only that but putting in the time and the effort it takes to reach those goals you won't achieve it and if you you know if if you need help come to me or Leah or Kristen or Jessica whoever your coach is we are more than more than happy to help you reverse engineer your goals and figure out the work that it takes to get there because this is not going to happen easily you guys you have to put in the work and most of, I, when I, you know, I've been coaching for two and a half years now, I see the biggest gaps in not starting enough conversations and not inviting and not adding people to um, your network. So if you're not doing those things, you probably aren't going to be successful. That's just how it is. But those people that can start the conversations and really keep them going and make new friends, make new online friends, you're going to be successful. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the marketing funnel too. This is how I think about my business and what I need to do to get people into my network and then eventually, you know, hopefully in the end, they'll love it. They'll love Beachbody so much. They'll buy a challenge pack, they'll become a coach, and then hopefully they'll become a working coach. But that process takes a long, long time. So... Leads, those are people that you're adding to your network. You have to qualify them. Are they even someone that you want to work with? Are they, you know, if they have another coach, they're not a qualified lead. They have to be someone that you get to know well enough to say, okay, you're a potential. Then you might ask them to join a free group if you do that. You have to build that trust so that they actually want to join a challenge group with you. So once they're in a challenge group, what is your goal? It's not to get them to sign up as a coach, it's to make sure that they get the results that they want and that they fall in love with Beachbody. If that happens, then they'll be a repeat challenger. And then if they become even more loyal, hopefully they become a coach and then start working the business because they'll love it so much, they'll have these great results, people will start asking them about it. 
So that's kind of the marketing funnel in a nutshell. So if you're having trouble with any point in your business, you need to go back and look at that marketing, fun marketing funnel and see where it isn't flowing. So let's say you aren't having, um, you're, if you're not having enough conversations with people from day to day, you're not gonna have enough challengers. So you have to go back up the funnel and see where your, where your problem points are. Let's say you're having tons of conversations, but you're not getting enough challengers. You might not be, let's look at what the problem might be. You might not be demonstrating to, to them that you're actually proof the product works. You're not, maybe you're not having a really relevant conversation about fitness and how it relates back to you, um, that kind of thing. Um, and let's say you, you have no problem making contacts, you have no problem getting challengers, but you're struggling getting coaches. Well, then maybe you need to look at your challenge groups to see if people are actually feeling supported and getting the results that they want. So, you know, you kind of look back at that funnel and just see where am I going wrong? And really do, a, you know, really look inward because chances are it's you. It's not anything else. It, you know, you really, with this job, you have to look at yourself and look at what you are doing wrong because I, I guess I'm not, maybe I'm not making this clear. And I don't mean to like say that every, everyone's doing something wrong, but in my business, if things aren't going right, chances are I have a gap in my business. And it usually comes down to one of those things, one of those pieces of the marketing funnel that I'm not doing quite right. So I just want you guys to always be doing a self check. And it's easy to blame other people. Um, and these things do go in cycles. This is a very slow time of the year. And realize that you're gonna have to have a lot more conversations now to get one to get someone converted. But if you are proof the products work and you get that great transformation. Come January, you will have people knocking down your door. So I also wanted to like just point out this 30 days of gratitude challenge that I have going on because I see a gap in my team that they probably aren't starting enough conversations. I feel like they think that maybe it's salesy to do that. And I want them to be, and I want you guys all to be talking about starting conversations with no ulterior motive in mind. So that's kind of what this is all about. And it's just going to be a little challenge that we do in November, just reaching out, you know, hopefully three to five people. There's a new one every day, a new little assignment. So that should help you guys build your connections. But, you know, that might not be where you struggle. You really have to look at where you struggle and build your own little personal challenge around that. Mm, okay. So. I also talked about like the hot zone and always staying in phase one. And this is something that they talked about in leadership and, you know, granted leadership, I was like a baby coach there. That was my first time. There are all these like super successful coaches that are way more accomplished than I was. So this conversation was geared towards them, but I also see myself slipping into this a little bit and even newer coaches sometimes tend to st to slip out of phase one. Well, what's phase one? You always have to be doing a beach body program. I see that I have not always done this. I ran all these races over the summer and I was doing hybrid workouts and I was not a good example of how our programs work. So that's where I was doing a little bit of self evaluation. I'm like, okay, Kim, you're doing that wrong. So that's why I'm excited about core to force. I'm gonna do the program, I'm gonna talk about it every single day, follow it to the T, with the calendar, which is really not like me, but I identified that as a weak point in my own business. So I'm gonna be doing that. You need to be inviting, doing personal development, but also I want you guys to get really excited about your program and the coaching opportunity. Whatever it takes to get there, if you don't like your program that you're doing right now, for heaven's sake, do a different one. Um, people will tell, they can tell how excited you are or how not excited you are about what you're doing. It's so easy to tell if someone's just mailing it in. Zig Ziglar had a good quote, selling is a transference of feeling. And if you're excited about something, like I said, people can tell that. And it's so much better for you guys to leave voice messages, to be making videos, 
making phone calls where people can actually sense your excitement about what you're doing rather than copying and pasting. And in some of my trainings, you know, people are saying, well, I want to see, you know, like what scripts do you use? I'm like, oh, I hate that question because I don't want anyone to ever use a script when it comes to inviting. That should be something that comes naturally. That should be something that comes from within because you're excited about what you've done um, and you want to share that. I mean, I can tell you what I do and what I say and things like that, but that's not genuine to you. That will come across as being phony and I never want anyone to come across as being phony. So whatever it takes for you to get excited, do what floats your boat. I'm sorry for the really silly analogy, but um, you know, if it takes like running a challenge group about something that you're connected to something you're really excited about, do that. You don't have to go by what the team does. Do your own thing if that's what it takes to get excited. And I will tell you, I did not like the challenge groups that my upline was running when I first started as a coach. And that's like the number one reason why I broke away so soon because I didn't necessarily feel like they were me. I wanted, and I was excited about this stuff. I wanted to take the reins and just, you know, do for my challengers what I had kind of was hoping someone would do for me and they never did. So channel that excitement, let your challengers see it and they will, if you can convey that in a way that is genuine to you. Um, for some reason my slide got messed up here, but that was supposed to say, how do you stay in phase one? Yeah, I kind of went into that already. You know, if you're not excited about your program, try a new one. Always have a new fitness goal, you guys. And it's tough for those of us who are like in maintenance mode. You know, like I, weight loss hasn't ever been my goal. So that's been kind of tough. So I set really weird, crazy goals like running a marathon, <laughs> which um, was a fun accomplishment. But sometimes it leaves you a little bit like, at loose ends when you don't have one. So for me, Core to Force is gonna hopefully reignite my excitement for these programs. And I've always run challenge groups according to my own interests. You guys know that I love personal development. So, you know, I did the Badass Boot Camp because that was my favorite book. And I wanted to, at the time, write, you know, like all these assignments based on what I learned from that book. And so for me, that was a transference of feeling because I was excited about it. Always, always remain a successful challenger. You guys, no matter how successful you become as coaches, you are still always a challenger. So never lose sight of that. I see coaches that you know feel like they have to learn so much before they get started. They want to start a blog. They want a like page. And all that's great. But to be a successful coach, all you really have to do is be a successful challenger and share your journey. Um, it, it, it is so easy. I shouldn't say it's easy, it's simple. It takes hard work, but if you remain a successful challenger, always stay in phase one by being excited, by getting results, sticking to a program, you will see results as a coach, as long as you share your journey. So that's really all I have tonight, you guys. Um, I'm gonna open it up to questions. I'll stop the screen share here. Hopefully you guys learned something from that or got some little nuggets. Leah, I totally was gonna let you talk and I blasted through the whole thing. So I'm going to turn it over to you now. Okay. And you can just add your okay. comments to that. Yeah. I, so I went to my, if for those of you who don't know me, I am an elementary phi ed teacher and I was at a conference all day today since seven 30 this morning, learning how to be a better teacher. Um, and I think there's a lot of transfer of knowledge between teaching little kids and working with adults as challengers and even just with coaches on our team. Um, so I found myself thinking about Beachbody a lot when I was in these, um, you know, breakout sessions, which tells me one thing that this is a passion of mine. And that's why after going from 7.30 a.m., 7 30 p.m. after parent teacher conferences tonight I had 15 minutes to myself and I got on a call um, this is a passion of mine and I don't care what kind of day I've had I always make time for it I might not always have time for a power hour I might not always have time to invite I didn't invite a single person today but I still posted on social media I still got my workout done I still drink my Shakeology and I still I committed to these team calls and I'm still here. 
Um, so I, I don't know. I just, I scribbled some notes down and I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything that I was trying to say. So my point gets across, but I know in the beginning or even like maybe in the beginning you saw a lot of success and things kind of have plateaued for you. <laughs> this is not a business where there's a direct correlation between time and results. And that can be super, super frustrating. And it got me thinking today that, yes, it, it, it's not an overnight success, but I think about my teaching job, and for those of you who work full-time, I don't know, unless you're paid hourly and you get overtime, I know I don't, I'm salary. Tonight, I spent you know 12 hours of my day with my full-time job, and I didn't get paid a dollar, a penny more than what I normally would have made today. And the beauty of what we do as coaches is there is a direct correlation down the road. If you put the time in and you believe that it's going to pay out for you, there is a direct correlation between how hard you work and how much time you put into things. I don't even know if it's how much time you put into things. I think it's the, the really focused energy that you put into your business. You, there is a direct payout and it doesn't happen right away. So just trust the process. And it's, it's like what we tell our challengers. It's like you might actually gain weight the first couple weeks of your program. But we don't tell our challengers to throw in the towel after that first week of their challenge group when they hop on the scale and they expect to have lost 25 pounds. Well, you guys aren't going to make $1,000 a week right away either. So just keep in mind that this business is a little bit different than other things that you might have been doing, like your full-time job. Um, you know, for me, like to come home after such a busy day today and hop on this call, it's because it's a passion. I, I don't consider this work. Like this is just fun for me. If you're not having fun doing this, then, then you really need to reevaluate why you're here. Because I think at the end of the day, none of us looked at this opportunity as adding more to our plate. We looked at it as a fun community, a way to stay healthy ourselves and to help other people. And if you're not having fun doing those things, then maybe you just need to take a little second to yourself and just kind of reevaluate why you're here. And don't put so much pressure on yourself you know, like this is supposed to be fun. And I've always told myself, if this ever becomes like a, a second job, I'm not doing it anymore. Um, so I've gotten to this point now where, and I hate to talk money, but that was my number one motivator in the beginning because I had so much student loan debt. I was like $50,000 in the hole when I graduated. The income is big for me. So you have to find what is big for you. Is it that running challenge groups helps keep you accountable to your own fitness goals? Is it that you just really get those warm, fuzzy feelings when you help somebody in a challenge group and they lose, you know, five pounds in a week, whatever it is for you, whatever that motivator is, like you gotta, you gotta sink your claws into that and you have to continuously remind yourself. And that's why you're here because you know what? I'm fucking exhausted right now and I'm here because I love this. And I looked at my income today, my paycheck, and I was like, there is no way that my husband and I can go without this income at this point in time. Like, it's not an option. You know, like my, my budget for Christmas presents was paid today. Like I have this today. And Whereas in the past, like we would have been scrambling, struggling, people would have gotten like $15, you know, McDonald's gift cards for Christmas presents, because that's how we were living back then. So whatever it is, if you're not motivated by income, then don't think about income. But remember why you signed up and you committed to becoming a coach in the first place, I guess is my point in that. And it should be different for everybody. Um, I think there are a lot of us who are income driven, but there's a lot of us who are just purpose and passion driven too. And that's just as important. So, um, <clears throat> I think maybe too, like I got to a certain point, like, I don't know if, I don't know if I've shared this or not, but, uh, last year at summit, I was a four-star diamond coach and that was 
before my, my one year teaching anniversary, I am down to two stars. And when I lost my diamonds, I felt completely defeated. The, the wind was out of my sails. I was pissed off. I was, I felt really hurt by those coaches. They just, diamonds just up and quit. Um, and, and this just wasn't for them and I wanted it more than they did. And that's something that I had to redefine, reevaluate for myself. But when that happened, I had to sit down and take a really good, hard look at myself and just redefine what my goals were. And, you know, I think that if you're like at a point where you're kind of struggling, that might be something that you need to do, redefining your goals and redefining your why. And I, I think personally, it is pretty clear cut and defined what is expected as just a coach and what you need to do if you want to be an emerald and what you want to do to be a diamond and star diamond and beyond. Like that's all in our coach online office and the leadership ladder. So if you're writing down as one of your goals that you want to be a two star diamond, five star diamond, then you need to go back there and you need to take a look and see what's all required of that. And you need to make sure that you're, the time you're allotting to your beach body work and the passion behind it is it's all got to be connected because at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is just, you know, like Kim said, throw out these like, yeah, of course I want to be a 15 star diamond, but it's like set something that's realistic based upon, you know, how much time and effort you're willing to put in each day. Um, and I think I could probably sit and do work for two to five hours a night, but I don't want to give that much time. And so I know that I'm not going to make a million dollars. Like because of the amount of time that I put into things, I'm not going to make a million dollars because I just don't have the time. So you need to take a look at the time that you do have and make sure it's focused and take a look at the leadership ladder and just make sure everything is aligning. And if you're not sure how to do that, that's where your coach will help you. But I also think too that, you know, if, if one of my coaches on my team comes to me and says, I really want to be a diamond, what do I need to do to get there? Can you help me? The first thing I'm going to say is, you know what, do I have your permission to ride your ass if I notice that you're slacking? If they say yes, then I'll, and if I notice that they're not posting on social media, guess what? I'm going to be sending you a message saying, Hey, this is what I noticed. Um, so you have to be open to that feedback if that's what you want to achieve. And, you know, we've got leaders on this team. Like we've got people that are awesome at hitting success club. We've got people that can help you with rank if that's a goal for you. So just to use your resources, but also you just have to kind of be open to getting some constructive feedback as well. Um, there was one thing that – Sorry, this fruit fly is tormenting me tonight. Um, there was a, a visual tonight or today at my conference that I tried to send Kim and it just didn't go. Um, I don't know. This was very eye-opening to me. So if, I guess for me more so this, well, I'll just share the screen and I'll show it to you. Um, I think this would be a really good exercise for everybody to do. And sorry, it's not going to probably get much bigger, but um, draw three circles on your paper and in the middle, write down the things you can control. So I'll just tell you some of the things that I wrote down. Um, you know, I can control my power hour because I'm in control of my own time. I can control how many success club points I get because that's all on me. Um, I can control how many conversations I'm having each day. I can control how I'm adding to my network. I can control what kind of posts I'm making on social media. I can control my workouts. Um, so think of all those things that you can control. Those are your strengths. Those are things that you maybe don't want to focus your personal development on. And then in the middle circle is the things you can influence. So for me, I wrote things like, I can influence my customers, my challengers, my coaches, and my followers, but I can't, I can't control them. And I, that middle circle is a pain in the ass because it's like you post on social media and you try so hard to just share with the people the opportunity. You try so hard to help motivate your coaches and, you know, send them scripts and things and invites and all that other kind of thing. But at the end of the day, you got to stick to that middle circle and what you can control. 
Um, you know, you can't control how much time other coaches put into their business. You just can't. Um, you can't control if your customers stick to their meal plan or if they totally fall off the wagon on the weekends and then they blame you for not losing five pounds. Um, you can't control whether they do their workouts. You can't control whether people say yes or no when you invite them. Um, and you can't control what people think of you on social media either. So I just thought that was really eye opening. So if you're someone that's kind of just like in a struggle phase, like I think everyone's been there probably multiple times since they started coaching. I recommend doing this because I just sat down and I just did this tonight and I was like, huh, I kind of was like a nice bless and release situation for me. So not really sure what that had to do with anything else that I said, but I just, I wanted to share it. I took a picture of it today and I wanted to share it. So I'll stop talking because I've talked a lot <laughs> and thirsty. No, that was great stuff, Leah. And you know, I, what I wrote down that you said is you really just, you have to find joy in what you're doing. And whenever I find myself getting down on coaching or like my success club points aren't where I want them to be, I always go back to, I kind of retreat back into my challenge, give more energy to my challengers and my own personal fitness, because that's what I really love doing. And it's kind of like, it's ironic because that's what, well, that's what got me the success in the first place is doing all that stuff. And that's kind of what I meant by just going back into stage one or phase one. You have to find what gave you joy to begin with and reconnect with that. And some, you know, we can't all be on like an upward trajectory all the time. And I feel like this time of year is like one of those valleys <laughs> of what we're doing. And that's normal. But that's kind of why, okay, November, I'm just going to have fun with it. I'm going to do like this gratitude thing. I'm going to be all in with Court of Force. And you know what? Challenge, challenge pack sales, successful points are going to be a natural byproduct, but I'm not going to focus on them. So let's all focus on just finding the joy in coaching and going back to doing those things that brought us to the coaching opportunity to begin with. And I think we'll all be so much better off just by focusing on that. So I also wanted to let Kristen speak a little bit tonight. Are you there, Kristen? I am. Right, were you taking notes too? Hopefully you have some little yeah. tidbits to share with us. I'll mute myself so you can talk. Hey guys, for those of you that don't know me, I am up in Elk River, Minnesota. So I'm probably two hours away from where Kim is, but we met each other online and formed a really great friendship. So it's fun to be a part of this team. Um, so just to reiterate what these guys are saying is what I have found in the two years that I have been a coach is that starting conversations start to get to be like a paralyzing experience for me when I feel like it's focused on the sale. So when I start getting like that, I have to make sure that I'm pumping personal development in me like nonstop. Like I love Audible and podcasts because we're always on the go. We're doing different things. Or if you're in your house and you're doing meal prep and you're getting stuff ready for your kids, having an earbud in and just listening to that stuff. So some things that I would recommend when you're feeling a lot of pressure um, is to go back to the energy bus because like Leah and Kim said, people pick up on your vibe. So if you're negative or down or stressed or pressure, like they know right away if they're getting sold. So going back to something like the energy bus, the go-giver, even something like go for no, where you turn it into almost like a game to see how many people you can talk to and, um, see what their response is going to be. And a lot of times you're surprised by um, a positive response and it's like, sweet, you know? And um, so that would be my tip as far as like making sure that you are continuing to come from a place of relationship building and continuing to plant seeds. One of my coaches, she has been really bummed the last month, pretty stressed with some stuff in her personal life felt like she was really challenged with her business. Um, and then she goes into her back office and all of a sudden she has a new discount coach because somebody that she had been talking to back in March and then again in April and then in May, and this person kept saying no, no. And then all of a sudden she just decided she was going to go for it. So that's again, just another lesson of just every 
every day, show up. Show up, be present, be positive in people's lives. That's with your social media. That's with messaging them and just saying like, hey, I was thinking about you. Hey, your hair looked really awesome in that po- picture you just posted. You know, hey, you looked really great on those picture or on those um, Florida pictures. Those are little reasons that I just reach out and touch people. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, yeah, I was meaning to talk to you about X, Y, and Z program. So again, it's about relationship building and it's about staying consistent consistent every day just like we talked about like yeah you're busy we're all busy and we're tired and sometimes you just don't feel like it but it really isn't too hard to sit down at your computer pull up private message shoot off just a quick authentic note to connect with people and just making sure that you always have that calendar available so that you know what it is that you're going to be inviting to if people are showing an interest so that was my other additional support and plug no, that's all great stuff. And I love that you said go back to the energy bus. That's, that's another one of my favorite books of all time. Totally love it. And you're right. Like you have to do personal development based on your needs at the moment. I, that's why I hype on it so much. Like I, for me, whatever I'm struggling with, there's a book out there to help me get through it. And if you guys are struggling with something in particular, post a request because chances are one of us has a book to recommend based on that. So, um, I'm just looking at the chat. Nobody really had questions. Is there anything else that anyone wants to talk about? Jessica, you've been Uh, quiet. Well, I just got on. I was putting a little person to bed, so. Okay. Do you have five minutes to talk? Well, I don't know what you guys have talked about, so I wouldn't know where I would jump. Okay. Well, then I will. (laughs) I won't put you on the spot then. I guess we were talking a little bit about goal setting and keeping our energy up when we're in a slump because I think we're all feeling it right now being that, you know, it's that time of year when people are focused on holidays and less on fitness. It's a time when, you know, a lot of us are seeing like a retraction in our business. Um, I sent you a screenshot of all the coaches that I've had quit lately. And if I let that demoralize me, I would be just like a puddle. I, seriously, you guys, I, there must have been 20 downline cancellations this month alone. Um, it just makes me work harder. You know, I know that's going to happen. And those were people that, and this is just kind of a behind the scenes thing. And if you guys are seeing a lot of drop off, if you were seeing a lot of like discount coaches sign up for country heat, this is the point where they're quitting. So that's the reason why I know that I'm having a lot of cancellations because I look back to what I did a couple months ago. My, I had 58 success club points in August. That was amazing. At the time, I was riding really high on that roller coaster, you guys. Well, what goes up has to come down, right? So a lot of those people have decided that it's not for them and I'm having a lot of cancellations. Well, I could let that defeat me or I could let that motivate me to get back on that upswing again, which I see happening in January. So I know that what I do now will have that compound effect two or three months from now. So keep that in mind, you guys, during, you know, this time of year when it kind of sucks a little bit, you bring the energy, you bring the fun, you find the joy in what you're doing. And if you are spreading love and sharing good vibes, there's no, you know, there's not, there's no downside to that ultimately. And so that, you know, that was another little reason why the 30 days of gratitude, I love that kind of stuff. And I'm probably do something like that in December too, because I just think that the holidays for me is such a warm and fuzzy time of year. And if I'm not going to be selling a ton of challenge packs, I might as well be forming some really awesome relationships, right? So that's kind of how I look at it. Um, Another thing that I wanted to leave you guys with, and this isn't really related to what I've just been talking about, but before I go, um, or before we wrap up the call, core to force, back to that a little bit. This is your opportunity. If you want to purchase it and you have not enrolled a spouse yet or a sister or best friend or whatever, get them enrolled as a coach with a challenge pack. Even if they don't really want it, you can get, you can get it from them. That's how I enrolled my husband. Like whatever program was coming out that, at the time, I'm like, I want the challenge pack. But as coaches, we're not eligible for a second challenge pack. I had him get it, had him sign up as a coach. And so then he was actually my second. So he made me Emerald. 
and it was 21 day fix I think is the one that I had him got him get so if you aren't emerald yet and you want core to force have someone get the challenge pack for you with the coach enrollment then find someone else that wants to do it with you get them enrolled as a coach to do it along with you alongside you then you're emerald that's that's it two people that's all you need to be emerald so I know there are a few people on the call right now who are not emerald yet that should be your strategy and here's another thing you guys if you do that on Monday you get two challenge packs and say you've got success club points already you're at success club five you're doing it all on Monday you've got it done for October got it in the bag so I make it sound really easy but you know what it, it isn't that hard it really isn't if you know if you're putting yourself out there if you're excited about court of force other people will be too so yeah, Kristen says, I have a tendency to, I don't know, <laughs> was this from a while back? I have a tendency to over-engineer things. Back to basics. I don't know when you typed that comment in, Kristen. It could have been half an hour ago. But, um, oh, okay, to the other Kim. But yeah, I do think that, I don't know if we addressed that, but we do tend to um, over-analyze way, way, way too much in this coaching business. And like I said, always remain in phase one. Always be an excited challenger. That's really it, you guys. Be an excited challenger and share your joy, right? Find your joy if you lost it. Find it. And you know what? The, the biggest place to look for your joy are the, the people that support you. Whether you have one challenger right now or 10 or 20, they're the ones that picked you for a reason. Go focus your energy on them. Focus on pumping them up because if you make someone else happy, they're going to make you happy. So that's kind of what I do when I get down into a funk. I just try to make other people happy. Ends up making me happier than I probably made them. So, so Kim, I did think of something I'll share. Okay, go for is, it. I've been rambling too much anyway. Oh, it's fine. It gave me a time to collect my thoughts, except now I got to plug my phone in. Um, about like this being a tough time of year. Hold on. You're gonna look at my ceiling while I plug in. <laughs> okay. The tough time of year thing, yeah, it is. I've had a lot of coach cancellations, discount coaches and some working coaches or working coaches who've let their spouse go or whatever. I give myself about 45 seconds to have a pity party and then I move on. Like, go ahead and throw your pity party and be like, this sucks, this isn't for me. I mean, I do it at work, right? Like somebody pisses me off at work, I close my door, I like slam the desk drawer, I say some cuss words and I'm like, well, I can't spend the next eight hours acting like that, so it's time to move on. And so I'm like that with coaching too. You know, I have 30 seconds of pissed off time, and then just got to go, right? Like so much, is ha so much happens to everybody, right? Your grandparent dies, your kid gets sick, like just stuff really does happen. And, you know, you have a bad day at work, your kid acts up, whatever, but it can't, you can't wallow in it for a month right? Like you have to get back to life. Like you have to treat the day to day like you do anything else, right? Like you have to go home and make dinner no matter how bad of a day you've had. So kind of have to treat the bad beach body days the same. It's like, that sucks. I can wallow in it. Or I can just go, right? And you just have to go. Like there will be something and channel it into something. You know, they always say like channel your anger or frustration into a good workout. I channel, um, whenever like a discount coach quits, I'm like, okay, I have to backfill that. And I want to backfill it with five people. So I started working on my like page and then another person quit. And I was like, Hmm, I need to get a bigger draw. I'm going to work on my blog. And I posted my first blog post in like four months or something today. Cause I was changing domains and that was a mess, but I just am like, okay, I'm going to take that emotion that I feel and I'm going to write with it. And I'm not a writer. So it is just an interesting dynamic that I find something to do with that. And then at the end of that, I'm like, I feel really great about, you know, writing a blog post and I've forgotten what I was upset about in the first place. So go find a distraction and just move on, right? You have to move on just like you would with anything else. And it sucks. And I tell Kim every month, once a month minimum, I'm quitting. <laughs> so, so we, all go through it. I snapped her a picture today of a coach cancellation form. And I was like, I can't, I can't take it anymore. And then she snapped me 30 and I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I get it. We all get it. It's not like we don't 
empathize, but we just, you know, we're all suffering right now and you just move on. I'm telling you, I went through it last year. It's the only time I didn't hit Success Club 10 and I lived to talk about it, right? And I've made money since then. So you guys can too, I promise. I just always remind myself that even if I make $10 one week, it's $10 more than I would have if I would just quit this whole thing altogether. And I would feel a hell of a lot worse about myself, quitting on myself. My health would take a slide. I know that I would be missing certain aspects of this. So when you hit that little bump in the road, like you're still like write down all the pros for, from coaching. Like, yeah, income is a pro or having a certain number of coaches is a pro or your rank is a pro, but there's for, for rank advancement, there's like 10 other things that are non-related to rank advancement and income that are pros to be being a coach. And you, I just think I personally would miss so many different aspects of this com fitness community if I would have quit when I lost my four star diamond, you know, last year at this time. So just remind yourself, you know, whether it's you filled your grocery cart or your car up with gas, like that is something to really celebrate. And that's, that's, those are things that people struggle with every single day. So. Okay. One last thing, just to piggyback on what Jessica said, then I will wrap up the call because we've been in here an hour, but there is such a parallel to what you said, Jessica, about coaching and not giving up and allowing yourself that teeny tiny pity party and then moving on. It's the people that get over those things the fastest that have most success in life. And think about it with your fitness journey too. If you were to eat like five cookies and then be like, oh my God, I, you know, I just ruined my diet. I'm a failure. Well, I'm just not going to do anything. You know, I'm, I'm horrible. I'm not going to start until Monday. We could do that. Or you could be like, okay, I made a mistake. I'm going to get right back at it. So it's those of us that get right back on the wagon, whether it's with coaching or fitness or anything else in life that see the most success. So there's so many parallels with the coaching business and our fitness journeys. So I just had to throw that out there. Yeah. Okay. You guys, I hope we weren't too much of a downer tonight. I just feel like that was kind of the vibe. Like I totally didn't mean to like have this call be about, that but I was just getting the sense that so many of you guys were struggling because it is a downtime so hopefully you got a little reassurance that is totally normal and for those of you that are new coaches if you can make it through this time you are like kick ass like really like this is probably the worst time to start as a coach but stick with it because I promise you like January will be that little gift that we all get to unwrap after all this is over and it'll be so worth it so before I end, are there any other questions? I just want to thank you guys for all getting on this call because I know everybody's busy and it would be really easy to say, I'll just catch the recording, but it's so much more beneficial to get feedback from you guys and to just have this like discussion. I know I always learn a lot when we have like this face-to-face -face interaction. So just thank you for carving out the time tonight to get on. Yeah, thanks. And then I wanted to give a plug to try, make the effort to get to a Super Saturday event this weekend because that will do wonders for re-energizing you and your business, connecting with other coaches, getting three, four hours of just goodness and positivity and excitement back in your business. You're going to have a fun workout and then you'll leave feeling ready to slay the next two months. So make the effort to get to an event somewhere near you. Agreed. Can I ask a question? Of course. Go no, ahead. just say no and see what happens. <laughs> Tough, because I'm a teacher, oh, so uh -huh. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I know what it's like to keep working and working and working as a teacher and just, you know, feel like you're burning your yourself out. And, um, you know, I, I last month was the first month that I did not make SC, SC10. 
And I had started this journey at the end of February and became a coach at the end of March. And every month after that had always made SC10. And I think it was the last month or the month before I didn't make it. And you all sit there and say, oh, you know, you feel crushed. I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I would have to say within the past three days of this week, because Sunday I literally sat down. The weather was beautiful down here in South Florida. So I sat outside with my laptop and I literally wrote every name down that I could possibly think of, of anybody who's ever liked my like page, who's made a comment on my like page, who's ever made a comment to me personally, um, face to face about um, the journey that I've been on and the remarkable um, accomplishments that I've had. And I wrote everybody's name down. And I said, I can't let this happen again. So I wrote everybody's name down and I either text, I called, I messaged, I sent an email, something along those lines. And within the past three days, I just had, have had people just, I'm buying a challenge pack, where do I go? Or I'm buying this, what do I do? And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. So, I mean, and I'm still learning too and I don't want to look like an idiot, but literally on this call, I just had another person say, you look fabulous, I'm done feeling like this. I've looked at all of your posts, I understand how you felt with the before and how you're now feeling with the after, I'm done. What do I need to do? So it, it truly is amazing. And I think for me, I'm a seventh grade math teacher, so I have a very type A personality. So this up and down roller coaster is like, you know, I'm biting my nails. It's very unnerving, but it's also kind of exhilarating at the same time because it kind of makes you work a little bit harder. Whereas, you know, it then, like right now, I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I hit SC10 this month, I can kind of then not feel so pressured for this month. I can kind of maybe take those other people and guide them into November because you all are saying that November is a slow month. So I don't know, like what usually is your tactic for that? Because I see next month, the 21 day fix and the fix extreme are going to be on sale again. And I have people who are kind of like wavering on the fence. And I'm thinking to my promoting core to force. I literally was at work today and I was printing everything out so that I have all of the information. And um, I was just going to start, which I just saved um, uh, something for an event page. I'm still very new at this, so I don't really know how to do an event page or who, who I'm pulling or where I'm pulling from or what I should be posting. So thank God for Nicole. The poor girl, I swear to God, she, I got to send her like a bonus check or something. She's so patient with me. Um, so I've been picking her brain, looking at what she's been doing. Um, so I will be doing that. Hopefully, my goal was last night, didn't happen. My goal was again this evening, it didn't happen. So my goal is going to be to get it up and running, hopefully tomorrow, so I can kind of promote it over the weekend in full force. So to answer your question, I never leave any success club points on the table. I never, I know Jessica's a little bit different, but I always feel like I go guns blazing. I always give every month my best. I always do that. And I always, you know, I always have kind of have to have faith that the next month will be just as amazing. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't, but I never, like, if I have someone ready to buy a challenge pack, I never tell them to wait. I just never do. Well, I never told them to wait. It's I'm telling them in, in my head, okay, I don't need to, not that I need to pressure them, but I don't need to push as hard because I'm thinking, well, if I get, even if let's say I get success club 12, uh -huh. then that leaves those people that could have given me success club in the next month and now possibly not having anybody for the month of November. But what I think is if you are promoting core to force and you are doing it and showing that journey on social media, I don't think success club will, will be a problem at all next month. I wouldn't worry okay. about it because okay. most people will, most people, unless they've been a past challenger, devoted beach body fan, they aren't going to buy it right away. They want to see your results. They want to hear you talk about it. They want to maybe see some moves, hear more feedback about it. And so that's why we share on social media. It might take them seeing you do an entire round and then posting your before and after pictures to say, okay, I'm going to join the next group that starts at the end of November after Thanksgiving when I feel all fat and bloated from mm -hmm. eating too much turkey and stuffing. So that's why you have to stay in the game 
and really be dedicated to that program in your own transformation. Because if you want people at the end of November to sign up, you have to be proof that the products work. So that's kind of my mentality with this. Like, yeah, I'm going to hit those people right now that are ready to sign up. And I have challengers. I've got my Beachbody fans. But there are also people that are going to be watching me. So those are the ones that are kind of like in the back of my mind that I'm going to convert at the end of November. Can I just add something to that? Yeah. There is so much to be said about credibility because there are people that have reached out to me very recently, and I've been a coach for two years since June, end of June, um, who have not liked one single post of mine, have not commented on a single post, have not shared a single post, but I've privately reached out asking questions and I did not even realize that they were a follower. Mm -hmm. But because I've, I don't care if I've had one like or zero likes, I still post every single day about my workouts. So don't ever, I'm trying to think of the right word. Don't, don't get hung up on the number. It. Don't get hung up on the number because remember that your, your Facebook, whether you have a, your, you use your personal page or your like page, that is like your uh, accountability challenge group like on crack so you're just doing like a little bit more than what you would do in a challenge group and we all know that when we publicly announce that we're doing something or share with people that we're doing something we're more likable likely to stick to doing that so just keep doing it on your fitness page or your personal page or wherever you do it um, because there will, will be those people that kind of come out of the woodwork Okay. And they're going to especially do it on this launch if you've been talking about it. Like Kim said, they're going to be looking for results first. Um, so just keep posting away. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just to tag on to what Leah said, I think it's a lot like what Kim Carver said at our Four Vitals Behavior Training. It's with regards to the posting to keep doing it because whether you know it or not, people are watching. And that those are the people, you know, I've run into people out on the street that I had no idea had checked out my page. I didn't know they had seen anything. We weren't even necessarily friends on Facebook yet. And they've commented on, oh, I saw this post or I saw that post. So whether you know it or not, people are watching. Um, and eventually they're going to want what you have if you're putting all that energy and joy into it. They're going to want some of that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's a good note to end it on, Elizabeth. Like, totally. And nice to meet you, by the way. I don't think I've met you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it is so true. Just be present. Be proof the products work. Be consistent. Because like I said, January is when we all get to cash in, hopefully. <laughs> and like, that's, that's when all of this will be worthwhile. So delay of gratification, you guys. That's, that's what it's about during this this season so enjoy too you know focusing on the things that aren't maybe success club or the income or whatever knowing that that will come later as a result of what you're doing now so with that i'm going to end the call because it's late and you guys have been really good to stick in with us this long but um watch the the team pages for an announcement for our next team call and just realize that our times are a little bit inconsistent these days and like Leah said, we really appreciate everyone showing up live. That's amazing. We know you guys are all dedicated to what you do, and we thank you for that. So everyone have a great weekend. Happy Halloween. Don't eat too much candy. <laughs> and then we'll hit it hard with Core to Force right after that. So good night, everybody.